And we are, here we are. We're back. Um, I'm your host. One, one, we're a person down today because my lovely, my lovely assistant isn't here. <laughs> She's not well. So it's just me one and our guest. So I'm going to frame it. Today we're talking about experiences in prison. Experiences in prison? How are we going to frame it? Experiences in prison and life after. Um, my name is Mans. Well, some of you might know me as Amani, but yeah, my name is Mans. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have the conversation about the before, the during, and the after. I think so. You did. We're not gonna do it. We're not gonna worry about what you did. Mm. You did. How how long did you do in prison? Just under three years. And where were you? Transferred. Then I went to Wayland. Then the last stop was ISIS. All right. So, you're cr- you I don't want to focus too much on the crime. It's not important. We, but nah, it's not. <laughs> nah, we're not going to focus on the crime. Right, cool, guys. It's, it's, it's bigger than that. It's it, about, it is. It's about the, the experiences after all of that. Mm. Um. So you. So I take it you spent whatever you did. You didn't do it in London, right? No, I didn't do it in London. All right. So. What was, what was, what? I, what your first twenty four hours inside? Let's take it there. Let's, let's let's start from that. Depressing, really, really depressing. Furthermore, because as soon as you get inside there, you can't call no one or nothing. You got to wait for credit and stuff to go on, and they give you like twenty p. All right, I tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna bring it back. We're gonna walk it through. Go on. I've I've been. So I know what you're saying, but Go for on. the people that haven't, so cool. from the court, from the court, you sent down, sent down. So what's the? So you got the from the the journey from the court to the van. Okay, so the journey from the court from the van, you're in a circle bus. You don't see nothing on the outside. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. As in, you're on a bus. You're 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 in a little cube. It's like a cubicle, it's a cubicle, a little cubicle. cubicle where you got a wee and and in a little. Bottle thing, the plastic thing, and that, and it's just like you can't even breathe. You there's know? no, there's no concept. Of, do you remember? The, there's no concept of time in there because there's no. You've got no. You've got whatever the driver's playing on. Yeah, the radio. like whatever the whatever the driver's playing on the radio. The you, song? I don't know some radio songs. I like, I don't even know what the songs is. I don't even want to remember them. It's really, really, you're gonna have this conversation. Things are gonna start coming back. So you've got. So you're on the bus. Yeah, the sit down circle bus. How many? And then you go from the bus to the prison. From the bus to the prison, so you get off the bus now. You're 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 what's it? You're handcuffed to a man, as in your your hands here, your hands here, and your handcuff. You can't go nowhere yet. You, you got a chain like a handcuff thing on you. They walk you to the front gate. Time you get to the gate, you're getting checked in, and it could take you like two hours to get checked in to jail. If if you're lucky, you get two hours. If not, it takes probably more. Was his first time in first offense? First, first offense, like first time ever. No one gave you the um the the what to expect speech. I got a, I got a, a semi kind of what to expect speech from a couple of my no, my, my close friends, but it, it still didn't. No, it is <laughs> it my my. You know, it, let me tell you something so funny. You know, it is my brother, my older brother. He's like my best friend, but I call him my older brother. He told me. You best, you best get, you best get used to jail from now. As in, you best get your mindset right. As in, mm. prepare yourself when you go in there. Because when you go in there, it's nothing like what's on the outside of here. It's a whole different world. So I prepared myself. Once I got off the circle bus, I prepared myself mentally, but not physically yet. So mentally, I was like, All right, cool. This is what I'm gonna have to go through. So mm. I prepared myself to go through what I was gonna go through mentally, but not physically. Yeah, no, I hear that. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's even weird for me to even have the conversation because I'm sitting there. It's been when did I get out? 2016. Mm. I did what? 20, 20 what, 19 months. Mm. So a lot of it, I think I've put. You, it'll get because it's still fresh for you, right? Yeah. You'll it'll get to a point where you'll forget a lot of the yeah. stuff until like, I haven't even done a year yet. Yeah. So <laughs> after yeah, no, it get, it's still fresh. But what, it'll get to a point where you'll forget a lot of things. But then someone will say something, or you'll bump into somebody from somewhere. Craziest thing is, 
I bumped into loads of people that have been inside of and mm. and we have these conversations all the time and like some people go back to doing the same stuff. Some people go back to wanting better for themselves. You get mm. so it's just about what you want. What's the stat? The stat is I think within the first two years, Dion will probably put this up somewhere. I'll point to it. Yeah. Within the first two years, I think. It's over half of people that get let out. Yeah, they get they reoffend and go straight back in within the first two years. Craziest so thing is one of my brethren's just gone back to jail and he just came like two weeks. <laughs> I think even but to be fair, even when we're gonna go back to go forward, but even when I was, I th- I'm trying to remember there were a good few people that went away and came straight back in the time that I was in. There. And you're like, what are you doing back here? It's like, boy, this is one of the things. Mm, it happens. happens. You know what it is. I'll be honest with you. It happens, but it don't happen. It depends if if you want better for yourself. You get it. That's how I see it. As in, cool, you're on license and that and all that, but you can avoid doing the same thing. It's just about if you want to do it or not want to do it. Yeah, that's true. What? I don't even know how to start the conversation properly. What? Because I, I feel like my experiences and yours are going to be slightly different. Yeah. Not because. We went to different places just because of age. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I was... 2000 and... I was... How old was I? 34. When I went. Mm. 2014. And you were what? 26? You know what? When I went in? Yeah. 24. You were 24? Yeah. So from the... Int- I remember a lot of the 24-year-olds that I was away with were the, there at the same time. They were very... They... Their experiences and my experience is different because mm. they were you. You lot came in there with this mad kind of energy. Yeah, yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of twenty-four year olds are still bringing a lot of their outside arguments in. Yeah, that's correct. So there's a lot of like, it's almost like a, a mini. It's like a mini gangland ecosystem. Do you get what I mean by that? Now it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, yeah. Cool. In the like, the. Yeah, like for instance, what you're saying is true. Like right now, it's very crazy. As in, well, well my generation, it's crazy because there's got a gang stuff going on, and once you can't get it on the outside, they'll take it to the inside. Because in the inside, it's more easier to do it in the inside. Mm. You get because everyone knows where you are. You're not out and about. Yeah. You're in one place. Do you get? Yeah. You can't behave, so damn kids. I can't behave, it's true. You're being black on black goddamn crimes. <laughs> it's mad. It's mad, but then if you were lucky, you'd get someone that would kind of, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I was very much a, a calming influence for a lot of people when I was away. Mm. Like, they would come and just, people would just come and sit in my cell mm. and not want to leave. It was kind of jarring at because I've sometimes it kind of jarring, so they just come and they just a man will just come and hang on, hang by your door, mm. and you'd have a conversation one day, and the next day the conversation would go on for maybe 10, 10 minutes more. Then the next day is half an hour, and then Saturday, there's two people sitting in your room, like, and we're just I'm doing my crosswords, and a man's watching TV, and the other person's just sitting there in silence, and then in up next week there's another another two people, I have a whole dipping. Bible meetings <laughs> minus the Bible. In <laughs> not for real. Nah, it's, it true, it's, spe- true, it's true. It's true. It's true. And I, I, I say it, and I'm, I'm saying that it was jarring. But for some people, they needed. Like I understood it, they needed it because I never. I kind of went in there. I kind of was settled in the fact that I was in there. Mm. But because even when I went, you see, when you, you're going to go back again. But you mm. see, with the, the the minute that they send you down, yeah, I remember the. The judge said, says what he said, I, w- I had no one in there. Mm. I said, no one's not coming to fit just in case it goes to itself. Mm. So I got walked down Isleworth. I never forget Isleworth Crown Court. I've got walked down, mm. and the woman who was in charge of taking every gorgeous. <laughs> I can't lie, they got some decent nah, judges out there. I can't they're, they're lie. To you. And this gobs. Was the, this was the officer. <laughs> she had nails done, everything in <laughs> Isleworth. She, oh man, Asian, I think. She, Asian girl. <laughs> Listen. So this is part of the reason why I had to, I had because she was like, you're so calm. In the back of my mind, I'm saying, there's no way you are seeing me fall apart. No way, because we might bump into each other again. So there's no way in hell thing. And funnily enough, about a year into my sentence, I had to go back for, for something. 
I've ended up back in Isleworth. And they were like, oh, how are you? I said, right, you see? <laughs> so, yeah. But because I, I was very kind of just reserved, like, I resigned myself to the fact this is what it is, isn't it? So when I went, mm -hmm. I never went with no outside baggage in terms of arguments or not with people. I never had no kind of allegiances to any particular area mm -hmm. or any block or it was just mm -hmm. me. This is me. Take me as I am. Boom. Mm. So my my little area of comfort for people yeah. was kind of it, it's it's quiet here. So yeah. You can come. You can jam here. It's quiet here. Yeah. But outside of that, like a lot of people, you 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 lot were running things rugged in there. But like, uh, serious, bro, madness. I'll, mm -mm. I'll be totally honest with you, yeah. Fam. People in, fighting in visits and all sorts. I can't what? believe it. What? Man. Man's baby mums are getting conked over. Man's <sighs> man's man's youths are getting pushed out the way. And Madness. govs are all running into visit rooms. and Madness. It's crazy. Like, I won't even lie to you. Like, it's not a nice place. Like, especially when you just want to see your loved ones. And yeah. man are fighting in front of your loved ones. Your kids are all screaming. And Cause You know, a lot, for the, a lot of the older, older heads that are in there, like they really hated the fact that yeah, they they had prisons the, that were mixed with under. Yeah, the, under the older heads don't like mi mixing with the the, the young, young kids. Yeah, because the young kids don't. Well, not you got what well, I know. Yeah. Obviously, others they they don't know how to behave in it. So the older got like they don't know how to be. The older got say they don't like the younger. The younger got don't like, don't know how to behave. But it's true though because you got like kids that are like twenty, twenty one, twenty two, thinking they're tough and disrespecting olders and. Do you get it? Like anything runs in jail. They don't care. Like, do you get what I'm saying? There's no, yeah, the hierarchy is not, it's not, they don't really, it's true. They don't care. They don't care. And then the spice thing, all of this, you know, it's so much, this, this could be like an hour long conversation. There's so much stuff that I think I've forgotten. That now I'm just sitting in, even when we were in the car, you were saying something. Yeah. And I'm getting flashbacks. I'm thinking, you know what? Yeah. I put a lot of it, I put a lot of it um, at the back of my mind. Like, even we were saying about the sound of keys. Hate keys. The, that, that, that noise of keys knocking. Keys knocking, keys, I uh, hate. As in, as like in. You'd be. As in, let's say, for instance, Kieran has his car keys in his hand, yeah? And the keys are dingling, you know, like they're shaking. But you're so used to hearing govs every night coming, walk, to, check coming to check your door and forget the keys are just like tingling this, like this. this, this. You see that sound? That sound there gives me PTSD. So, so, so does that trigger? Yeah. Yeah, so let's say, for instance, once you hear those of keys like that on the landing, you, someone's cell is getting spun and everyone's getting taken someone's out. Their doors cell. Getting open. Someone's door's getting open and stuff's going down. So, for instance, there's times when I was in Chonksford. I'd hear keys walking around the garden. I'd just wake up on my sleep at like 1 a.m. in the morning, go to my flat, push the flat to try and see what's, what's walking across the garden. Do you get it? to see anything that's going on? So keys give me like bad PTSD. As in, I don't even like carrying my own keys, but I have to because do you get it? It was like, you know, but it, it goes, it does go away for uh, after a while, but there is a bit where you, any kind of, any anything metal clinking, whether it's key, it could be a door, you know that sound where they shut the yeah. and turn it. Mm. That noise, anything where it's metal on metal for about a year, 18 months afterwards, you're like, it's almost like a chalkboard when someone goes. Like, times like, even times like, I try to leave my keys at home, mum won't let me. Because I just hate keys, like, I hate the sound of it, like, everything about it, like, just gives me anxiety and PTSD, like, it plays on my head. Like as Kieran says, hopefully it will go no, after go or after a while. Like certain things, I hope will go definitely after go a while. You'll forget. You'll forget everything. You'll forget everything. There's a, you will definitely forget everything, and it will come like a dream or something, mm. and then you'll get little flashbacks, or someone will say something, and you'll be like, oh, "Yeah, I remember that." Yeah, like the whole the, the, even the whole serb. We had a. A couple conversations before we got here in the car. Mm. Probably should have saved it to be fair. But we can talk about it again. But um, yeah, the servery, the food. You were talking about cooking in the kettle, and that. I 
I've just got used to cooking on a stove. I promise you that. Yeah, like, I cooked chicken for the first time, roast chicken the other day, thanks to my mum. First time ever. I'm so used to skinning a chicken and putting it in a kettle full of seasoning of water. It was crazy. I was amazed to that. But, but you know, shout outs to um anybody that I was away with that cooked cooked me well not cooked a Sunday dinner. Recooked a like Sunday know, dinner. They, they know how to cook, you know. And Jim. broke me off on it because I'm telling you, there were times where people for no for, for nothing other than we got on decided to bust me on some curry chicken or yeah some but curry I had, mackerel or I, ha- like, I had I had this one Asian uncle he's an Aki and Joe every Sunday without a fail there's a bowl of rice and chicken just waiting for me people would and people would come and break you off still say right you, have you eaten I've, I've, I've had something say right come and then you go and it just be the com- the, as much as and this is the side of prison that no one ever really talks about it's always when people talk about it, it's always the fighting and the mm-hmm. the violence and the, the drug taking and the this and the that and whatever else. But the, it, if you're lucky, sometimes there is like a community aspect to it. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of people, that will get you through. Obviously, I only did a short sentence, but that will get you through a lot of the dark days where you're sat there and you're like, oh, this is... Because it gets... After maybe the first year... It's like Groundhog Day. You remember that? It feels like you get up, yeah. you have the same conversations yeah. with the same people in the same building. Same routine. It's literally Groundhog. You're probably too young to know that film. The, mm, films. Nah, I don't know the, that. the guy wakes up and every single day, he lives the same day over and over again. I watched it. At, right. But that's <laughs> basic. That's prison. Yeah. So, but, so without the little escapes, like if you're, when you're not getting a visit, you're not getting a phone call, and you're not getting... Phone calls are mad though. Yeah, you know, but there's sometimes it, it's more hassle than it's worse. How much worse. they charge that like, BT charge for that like, half an hour? It's like three pounds something. But everything, for one call. everything, and that and that's that again is the other side of <laughs> something that people don't know. Yeah, how you're overcharged on every single phone calls, phone calls, um, food, food, crazy clothing. Clo- what? Like, Do you know how much they charge for a tracksuit in a catalog? Like and. It's crazy that like, I forgot like they're trying to extortion. You're lucky you even get it. You're lucky. If you, it's actually true. You're lucky you even you're lucky get if it. you even get it. You got govs that would, the, your parcel will come at the front of the jail. The govs ain't trying to get. It. They're gonna tell you it's not there. You'll lucky get it like four it. months later, or five months later. Or you get it when you leave. Or you get it when you leave. Yeah, it's a it's a business. I'm someone was. I was someone was. I was like someone voice noted me the other day. Said they what do they charge for the TV in there? You know they charge twenty p. <laughs> 20 pence it's a pound 20, that, that, it used to be 20p yeah then it went up to a pound so it, they take it off your like you get paid in jail for like you get like 2 pound 80 a day or something they take it off that they take it off that so how are you meant to survive in jail like some man I know some man that 2 pound 80 they'll use it for their last phone call or they'll use it for a box of vapes or did you get it and you gotta do they the math as well they don't have nothing there's I think it was last it's 80 this is 80,000 for the sake of the conversation there's 80,000 people in prison here, male and female, right? Mm. So a pound, a pound a week for your TV. Do the maths on that. Yeah, and these are not no fancy TVs. These are like mash up, mash up. Five five channel, to the f- <laughs> twenty eight channels. Only five channels work. Yeah, and you'll be lucky if five channels work. You might Man. get you might get BBC One the news and something else. Which channel? Oh, that the music channel that no one wants to watch. Prison radio. Oh, oh. Oh. And that's what they call prison radio. That's what it's called. Oh man, prison radio. You never went to Scrubs? Nope. <laughs> so all right. So wait, you were so list where you went? Chelmsford. Chelmsford. ISIS. ISIS. We'll come. We'll come back to that. <laughs> we'll come. We'll probably end on ISIS. But Chelmsford. Wayland. Chelmsford was a what cat? A uh, C cat. No, B cat, sorry, B cat. So Ramon Jail. Ramon Jail, and then they filtered yeah. you they filtered you to Wayland. And where's Wayland? That's Norfolk. That's a grown man jail. Was in a big, so what was that like? Man. That that there it's good and bad at the same time, do you get it? So it's good as in if you want to get your mind right and your body right and stuff, because there's grown men that do all the gym and then they just want to do their burden and get along and then you got the little ones that think they're bad and just come and cause problems, yeah. you see. Wayland's a more vote, like, there's there's no black govs in there. So was there none? No, not a one. 
they're all white in there. That's in Norfolk. That's the middle of nowhere. That's the countryside. Not one black gov. I remember asking the governor, where are all the black govs? And the one time I only seen one black gov is when they were so low on staff, he got transferred from Brixton to oh, Wayland. Word. And he was the only white gov in the jail. Other than that, the yeah, only black gov in the jail. Other than that, there was no black govs. But there's a majority, but there's loads of black men in there. Do you get it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because even, go on. Yeah, because, all right, let me tell you like this. When I went to ISIS, there's loads of black gloves in there. As in, they want the best for you. They want to see you progress. As in, if I say, let's say, for example, you're a black gov. I say, miss, like, my stuff's at reception. Like, can you help me out and just try to get it over for me? They'll be like, yeah, they'll help you in it. Just make sure you behave. Don't cause me no trouble. Because if you cause me trouble, I'm going to have to do more paperwork. And it's long, like, you get it. Ask a white gov now. It's not there. I feel like it was definitely a London it's, thing it's, as well. It's not there. I remember asking a gov for my set what I got for Christmas. Um, six times I had to ask him. He tried to tell me no every time. I said, bro, like, I know it's there because my mom told me she sent it in. Like, I know it's there. He told me no. I've had to ask another gov to check it. It's there all along. He just didn't want to get it because you don't want to help me. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a prisoner. It's not your choice. It's not, it's not, you don't have to help me. Yeah. So I don't mean nothing to you, but when it comes to black govs now, they really do want the best for some of the black boys. Do you get it? Like they don't want to see them like fail and all that stuff. You see what I'm saying? It's like school, isn't it? It's a bit like, but you just—it's like boarding school, but you don't leave in that respect. Yeah. So there's always going to be like a handful of staff that, even for, I feel like the the way the staff dealt with me was like levels above the way the staff dealt with a lot of other people. But that's purely because I gave them no hassle. It's true. It's just, like, it's just, it's just, a, it's just depends who you are, isn't it? And yeah, how your yeah, character like, literally, is. Literally, literally that. Because even there'd be times I just, I just keep myself to myself. They'd come and say, right, you're all right. I say, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, but you just, it's, we don't really hear or, or say, I'm here, isn't it? I'm sitting in, my, sitting in my, little, my little box room. I've got my crossword. I've got my books. I've... Listen to the radio, I'm oh, good. You did crosswords, yeah? Yeah. I listen to classical FM. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you said. Huh? I can't lie, I didn't I didn't I didn't do crosswords, but crosswords. I did the um the the um I did like the education side. As in no, I got a, that's why I did my um education. As in my PT did course. Did you do you do railway? No, I did my PT course in I did painting and decorating. Yeah. Um and then we managed to convince the, the gym orderlies to, to run a PT course. I wish I'd done gym. Oh, yeah, I wish. They were in there every day. I wish I was. And in the Even when, did, did you had gym sessions and scrubs, yeah? Yeah, but not often. Did they get cancelled? Of course, what the fuck? As in, I remember getting ready for gym thinking, yeah, I'm going to go push some weight today. Can't go gym now, lads. Something's happened. Something's happened, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be walking to the gym sometimes <laughs> in scrubs and you'd get, and they'd be like, now we've got to turn back. What do you mean? Like everyone's got their bags. And like, what do you mean? Yeah. Or they'd come and tap. And or, or the first 10 people can go gym. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not out your door already, yeah, you're yeah, down the bottom. Yeah. You're not going gym. Like there's wicked everyone's job. fighting to try to go gym. Scramble. Everyone's trying to get in. Nah. It's rough, man. But I did, you know, painting and decorating. I can, I can actually like, hang wallpaper in that still. Mm. Yeah, it's a quite a professional standard, actually. I don't want to toot my own horn. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Took a, I took a couple courses in just There's a lot of courses you just do it to get out of yourself. No, nah, I, I did it for the certificates. I can't even lie to you. You did it to come out of yourself. I need the certificates. I've done it for the certificates still. I, I did, did yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Big strapping. <laughs> <laughs> big dudes in the in the yoga room with this little um, yoga lady with the yoga blocks and that. Yoga. For, I did, nah. I've got acupuncture. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah, I got acupuncture. What, what is that? Where they put the little needles in, and your muscles jump. Stress relief. Yeah, they had where we were because I was in. I started off in Scrubs, and then went up to Only Warwickshire. Oh, everyone wanted to go to Only still. Only was all right. Mm. Only was all right, but they had the courses that they, the things, the kind of things that they offered. Because it's a lot of, I don't know, maybe it's because there was a lot of smokers and that up there, mm. so they'd give you a lot of like. 
courses and stuff to get people off their mm. addictions. And mm. one of them was the, 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 the other menial ones, like mm. taking CD players mm. apart and stripping this mm. and breaking down metal and mm. all that kind of stuff in the workshops. Um, yeah, hard was it hardcore labour? Yeah, That's something like that. that. I took Maybe is what it is. I took a couple of lessons in in Jar. Yeah. I did the railway course. That was the one. That that was the holy grail. Everyone was trying to get on that. Everyone. One. My brother, my brother's on the railway course now. My older brother, he just come out. Oh, yeah, money. Yeah, no. Money in it. I passed the railway course, but obviously I didn't bother taking up, but I can still do it now. But I just didn't bother taking up because it kind of scares me still putting your life on the line on the train. Like, I think it was the videos that made me stop doing it. Like, you know, when they show you the videos of well, what when could things happen? could go wrong. And I'm thinking, there are. So, to be fair, with HS2, though, that's probably, a, if that ever gets finished, it's probably a, a decent little. Sweeties, let me have one. That's probably a decent yeah, little. Yeah, well, 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 well. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else did I do? I did working with youth. Oh, is it? Yeah, I worked with youth. Oh, don't you know my CV is immaculate? As in. Working with youth. What, like offenders? Yeah. So, why, is that not something you want to go on and do? Still. I do, but I ain't got the patience, man. Kids, you know, you're younger than me. Like, it's hard, right? Like, it's funny you say that. Cause we had a, we, this came up in the last, one of the last ones we've done about mentors and who would be. D was telling me I should be a mentor. Yeah, but there, there you go. Yeah, I don't have the, you know what it is? I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I wouldn't, says that. I, don't I, wouldn't I wouldn't, I wouldn't, now, nah, you know what it is? I wouldn't mind, um, I wouldn't mind, what's the word called? I wouldn't mind, like, helping out the young kids and that, but you know where. I'm still involved in certain things. I'd be a hypocrite to say, "Well, oh, like do this and that when I'm not doing it myself." Do you get? People say that. I don't know. I don't know how how much that rings true. You can always give someone advice from a from a I've I've done it, so you don't have to do it kind of perspective. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes mm. it's, we, we limit y- the impact you can have on somebody because you feel like. It's hypocrisy to tell someone not to do something when in actual fact it's probably exactly what they need to hear mm. when they need to hear it. Like, stop doing that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So don't, maybe, don't write yourself off too quick because you never know. You might, that, that you might have one conversation with somebody that changes their whole perspective. And then in turn, they have a conversation with two other people that. Now what you're saying, what you're you saying? know what I mean? No, it's just that you have to start it in order for it to trickle. No, what you're saying? Yeah, what I mean, don't, don't write that off. You never know. I feel like we talked about enough about on the on inside stuff. Insides. Outside. What was it? Because you spoke about the blue phone. Yeah. So, what did that feel like every time you had to phone home? Or phone, because you said you got a son, right? Yeah, I got a son. How old, so your son would have been? Three or two. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, so that phone call, mm. all those, was it weekly? How often did you call home? I called home like twice a week. Sometimes I'll go missing for like three, four weeks and my mum will be upset and write me and yeah. say, has anything happened to you? Yeah. Or she'll send me, do you get email a prisoner? Yeah, email yeah, yeah. A prisoner. yeah. She'll email me like, or has something gone on? Like, are you okay? Are you good? Why haven't you called me? And more time I haven't called because well, you're just in your own world. You're just going through what you're going through. Do you get? It? Sometimes it's easier not to speak to anybody from outside. Yeah, because because when you phone people on outside, they'll be like, "What's going on in there?" You'll be telling them the same thing that I done yesterday. Oh, <laughs> like, like my mom would ask me like, "Are you alright? What's going on in there?" I'll tell her the same thing. I said be like to her. The same thing I've done yesterday. Like, you know, I'm just going to tell you, like, you know, you're going to call, and you're going to tell me to call you, we're going to speak, you're going to ask me how my day is, I'm going to tell you the same thing I've done yesterday. That was so frustrating. That, that was probably one of the most frustrating things in the whole thing. That was so frustrating. So can I ask a question? Go on. <clears throat> what, what is it that you want to hear when someone calls you? When you call someone? Or, yeah, or vice versa, when you're taking an outside call, you're calling something and Outside. I just want to hear. I don't, what did I want to hear? What was it? I don't know. Just tell me something. Like, just tell me. So, what's happening? And then you tell me what's going on. Because I don't have anything to tell you. Yeah, like, when you ask people inside what's yeah. going on, oh, they're going to tell you the same thing. Yeah. Like, and then I, you're going to ask them a week later, 
same thing. The whole point of that phone call for me was to have a conversation with somebody that I haven't had that day already. Do you know okay, what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, I don't, tell me, what, if, you could be out, you could be, there were times I'm phoning people, they were on holiday. <laughs> holiday. Just, and it, oh, what's, it, what's it saying? Or what's, what's going on out there? What have I missed? What trains are out? What this? What, <laughs> like, what albums are out? What yeah. films? Like, just tell me anything that I don't know in here. Because every, I don't, I don't want to hear anything. It got to the point where I didn't want to talk to anybody else inside there. Yeah. Because I see you every single day. Every day. It's like being in the Big Brother house and yeah. not being able to leave. It's awful. Step out on out your door on the landing. You're seeing the same faces Same face, every but then day. the flip side of that was there'd be times that you'd call home mm. and then you'd be in a mood off the back of that phone call. Yeah. And then I've got to carry that around with me for the whole day. And so it would it, it would work two ways. You'd get you get make the phone call, the phone's the phone call put you in the mood. Mm. Now you've got to spend the next 24 hours with people saying, right, you're all right. Like, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to tell you about my personal life because we're not friends like that. I, I don't know you. So I, I'm not going to tell you that I'm going through whatever with my missus or I'm going through whatever with, or I've had an argument with it, this guy because he's not sending it, this or... It, it's, it's funny that you say that about not telling no one what you're going through in jail because I've seen people tell people what they're going through in jail and the next minute it's on the yard. As yeah. A man, know your business. Everyone knows your business. Yeah, you're thinking, yeah. Yeah. right, how do you know that? Because yeah. my man's told my man and things get around in jail so quick. You'll be on one side of the jail. The other side of the jail has already heard it mm. and they already know what's going on with your business. Full sense of security though, isn't it? Sometimes you, because you see people every day and you, you feel like you've got some kind of rapport going with the person. You feel like you can tell them anything because you'll be... And they'll say something, you'll say something. You've got no intention of repeating what they've told you. Yeah. They've got every intention of making your business public. Like, and Because it's true what you're saying. There'll be times I don't even know this person and I know yeah. that you got ghosted on a visit. That is the worst one. <laughs> I know, I know your, your, your BMs I, on, on I, Facebook talking to I, this man. I, I ID, you know, you know how it feels to get ghosted on a visit? It's horrible. <laughs> you know, you think the love of your life is coming to visit you or getting, waking up fresh early showers or putting your little roll on and all this stuff to go out there, sit there. Wait for them to come through the door. No one ain't coming no through that door. Coming. No one ain't coming. <laughs> no one ain't. You're looking at all your other brethren on a visit with that girl, hugging and kissing. You're there with the yellow strap around, waistband. It's chilling. No one ain't coming to visit you. You try to hold them. Answer Even that, voice. there's no kind of... Because that, that feeling there, there's no kind of, like, not support, but... For someone that's already going through it, like there's people that are in there, they're going through it, proper going through it. And that visit is like... It makes them happy. Yeah. So for you not to get that, they literally just put you back in the little the little holding cell. <coughs> you sit there while everybody else is leaving. Then you've got to wait for everybody else to come back because they can't be asked to do two trips. to yeah. One to put you yeah. back and one to come back for everybody You've got to wait. So you've got to wait for everybody to come back in then everybody's sitting there having a conversation about what they... Oh, how was your visit? How was your visit? You're sat there like a lemming. <sighs> don't know what's going on. Don't know why people ain't turned up or nothing. To have to wait 24 hours till you can phone to be told that the train was late or... I didn't know it was today. I didn't know it was today. Or I think one of mine was they got there. And they didn't let me in because I they, didn't have no, they didn't I didn't have no ID. Yeah, that happened to me. Yeah, or well, my brethren had an argument with the people on the other side that ended up getting banned. Or, or the drug, uh, the dogs had smelled you for drugs. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a lot of things, man. It's a lot of things. It's not, and they don't... I think they, I think that one's there. I think that one there is the most worst feeling you could yeah. ever go through. Like, it's, it's, it's worse than someone not picking up your phone call because you're, you've you prepared yourself for the whole day. Telling everyone, yeah, I'm gonna go visit tonight. I'm getting ready, looking fly. Yeah. My jeans on. I got my shirt on. You're all getting up early in the morning, ironing your clothes, telling the governor, I need the ironing board and iron now. I got to visit later, just to go out there, and no one's turned up. You got, go on, sorry. You got all the other prisoners saying, "Bro, do you want some food? Like, do you want to buy you food?" Yeah, <laughs> all of that. Oh gosh, uh, all of that, Emma. Oh, do you want something? 
Oh, do you, do I, do, but send, send him a drink. Send him a drink. Because he just sat there on his oh, own. Oh, you're all right. But then that's you know, what we're saying, what I'm saying about community and a little. If you're lucky, you'd get that kind of treatment from people. Lucky. If you were lucky. If not. You're just there sitting, staring just sitting at there, a wall. Sitting, sitting there and it like. <laughs> Like a numpty. But you said about your own clothes. You wore your own clothes in there. Yeah. You know, I refuse to wear my own clothes in prison. Why? What? They're my clothes. <laughs> I refused. I did not wear anything that belonged to me. Yeah. The whole time I was in there. You give me your clothes. I wear your tracksuit. <laughs> yeah. What, I, the PIU, the yeah, grey clothes? Nah, the man. burgundy top. I refuse to wear it. I just, I'm not doing it. My clothes are my clothes. They sat, folded, I think I might have worn my, my, my thing once. Mm. And then I said, never again. Why am I doing that? No, I can't lie. I was, no, trying, I to get, I was trying to go out there looking fly. No. Fly, fly, <laughs> fly for me was, fly <laughs> for me was my tracksuit. Until I go out there. Tracksuit. I refused. I refused to wear anything that belonged to me <laughs> you know, inside that thing. Yeah, I was yeah. so stubborn, mm. so I'm not doing it. You know what's actually funny? When I went to Wayland... At one point, you couldn't wear your own clothes. So I got in there when you couldn't wear your own clothes. They had like these shirts and these boot cut jeans. Oh yeah, these blue shirts. Like, and I was so skinny when I come into jail. The shirt didn't even fit me. You know, like shirt you got a big oversized shirt never on. Fit anybody. Clothes never fit. And that point, I said, "Yeah, I need to change my life around. I need to get big." And yeah, I think I even made them give me boots. Oh yeah, they got they got boots still. Yeah, if you want to wear them, I think they, I made them give me a, a brand new pair. But I said my feet are too big. I need a, I need a pair of boots. But well, I wore them boots in the DHL. I think I walk in. Do you know about DHL? Yeah. Where you pack people's canteens. Pack people's yeah, DHL. I wore the boots still. I'm not feeling. Yeah. I said I'm not. I said I don't want. I not, don't want nothing. And I didn't bring anything home with me from in there either. Nah, because most of my brethren is like people in prison. They said, bro, if you take that stuff out with you, bringing all the energy with you're you, you're bringing all the energy with you. So I had like loads of shoes and tracksuits. I just gave it to people that didn't have anything on the wing. Mm. And, I, and I stepped out in sliders and bottoms and that's it. <laughs> sliders and bottoms. Yeah. So when when you were kind of preparing for your release date, yeah. what was there like any anxiety about coming back? Outside, yeah. like what we kind of feeling? Um, so getting ready for to go home, everyone's reminding you that you're going home next week. You're going home next week. You're going home next week. Oh, you're going home next week. Are you going home? You're going home next week. You might as well yeah. leave that. You might as well leave that to me. Let me get your stereo. Yeah, let me, let me get an Xbox. <laughs> let me get an Xbox. Let me get your stereo. Well, let me get them mackerels. You're yeah, not, you're not going to take them out with you. <laughs> also, but hearing it is nice though because you're like, yeah, I'm oh, going home. Like, dear. yeah, like. I'm going home, but they say when you're getting ready to go home, yeah, you're on a license condition as in <laughs> you can make one wrong move and you're back in there. As in it could be something so silly, having weed on you. Being in someone's car. Being in someone's car that you're not meant to be with. Or being with people you're not meant to be with, or being in an area you're not to you're not meant to be in the area. You I think what I think even I think one of the license conditions I'm sure is that you can't be with somebody that's got it's on bail or something. Yeah. You know, like, do you know how wild that is? Mm. You're in London. Your social group, there's a the chances that your social group is going to um, be on. I'm not allowed to be, of. I'm not allowed to be with my brothers. Oh, is it? Well, your mm. physical brother brothers? Yeah. Like, blood my, brothers. like my brothers, like, I'm not, I'm not allowed to, the ones that, like my close friends, like my, what I call my brothers. Okay. On my license condition, it says, I'm not allowed to be with them. How if, long your license? My license is two and a half years. So it ends in 2024. I'll soon come. <laughs> Around the corner Soon Around come. the corner It's it's yeah. just about Holding it out Like mm. I do everything In my power To not get caught In something that's gonna Get you Land me yeah. back in jail Cause I don't have the time To be Going back there And replaying everything That I've just Gone through Like G8 mm. Did you make your Your son come up there? No my son was one That ring him still But I get it Why She didn't want to bring him Because she don't want him In that in that environment But on the other end I was thinking like Raw like I'm upset Like the only thing That keeps me going Is my son And for you to not bring him I feel like you're trying to Hurt me You get it But when I think about it In the long term I, I don't want my son To see That side of the guy For uh, When he gets older I visited my daddy In jail yeah, like, it's long. I never made mine come up there Yeah like Do you get it I, I never made mine come up there I don't want him to even know That like, he doesn't even know That I've been jail Or even when he gets older, I, I don't even think I'll tell him. Like, do you get it? As in, obviously, I know that conversation is going to come one day because he's going to be like, where was you 
at this period this of period. time in my life? Why wasn't you at this birthday or why wasn't did you get? Because but because I have such a close bonding with my son and I've been there from the moment he was birthed, I feel like I owe it to him to have that conversation with him. Do you get at some point? At some point in my life, as in when he gets older, he might be twelve. How old is he now? I'm, how old is he now? Mm. He's about to be five in June, and it's gonna be the first time I'm out celebrating his birthday with him. Do you get? Because mm. I was away for like two birthdays. June what? June the thirtieth. June's a good month still. Summer. So summer baby. But outdoor parties. Yeah, like I, and I've, I've always had I've always had parties for him, but times where I haven't been there for like when I was in jail and that like. I feel like I owe it to him because he deserves a lot. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm. But mm. Yeah, I didn't want him to come. I didn't want him to come to I never, made, I never made my come up. I had purple visit though. I had a visit with him every month. Purple visit is when they that's when they do the um the video, video recording. That's one good so thing. You down, you download it on your download it on your iPhone or whatever phone you got, and it connects to the computer that's in the jail, and then you type in your information and, that, and then it's like thirty minutes. Oh, yeah. But that 30 minute goes quick. Yeah, of it does. As in, you'll be having a conversation and you have to post the conversation and say, I'll see you next month yeah. and continue that conversation. So you'll get like two, I requested two a month. That's for my mum and my siblings. And then I might have one in the morning, then have one in the night time to like say goodnight to my son and that. And you get what I'm saying? Uh, I would have been ahead for me. Cool. Um, so question for both of you. Um, what was your hardest? What was your hardest day or time whilst you were inside? The induction centre. That first, that two, that first two, the, the first two, two nights, the first two <laughs> nights in it, right? First no, two no in food, center. no nothing. <laughs> first two nights, where was I? And that was only around the corner. That was the that was the biggest mind for me. Scrubs is around the corner for me. Mm. Literally around the corner from me. Mm. I live around the corner from there. Yeah. That that the journey from the court to Scrubs. Mm. I drove past my mum's. Mm. <laughs> I drove past where my son goes to school. Like so, that journey for me, that first twenty four hours, mm. I'm I'm in Scrubs. There's people playing music outside. There's people live around there, innit? So mm-hmm. you're hearing, you're still hearing cars. You're hearing. People traveling, you're hearing mm. this. You're, it's summer. It was the end of summer. It's September. Okay. So it was jumping. Like, Bush was jumping. So for me, that first little bit, awful. And then the first couple nights where we ended up again mm. was awful. Because one of, one of the dudes was, like, having a whole breakdown. Like, he couldn't cope. We were all in a dorm. They got three man bang up in there. Yeah. That yeah, was crazy. I never, I never did. I never Three did. man bang up is mad. But there was a there was a guy in there because the rest of the stuff, five of us left scrubs together, mm. and one of the one of them wasn't coping well. So for the first two nights, he was bugging out. He couldn't get hold of anybody. He couldn't do this. He couldn't do that. We ended up kind of having to kind of not mother him, but like, oh, you'll be all right. Don't know the guy from random. But because we all came together, it was a thing where we've all come together, we're going to skate together, innit? So the first 24 hours in both places was awful. After that, it wasn't too bad. What was the, what was the question again? What was the worst <laughs> bit? What was, the, like, what, what was your like hardest day or in hardest jail. situation? Yeah. Not reacting to stuff still, as in ignoring negativity or ignoring people trying to draw you out. Like, for example... Let's say me and Kieran are on the wing together. And then let's say a man has said something about me and Kieran's heard it and other people have heard it. Next morning, man, are like, oh, my mom was saying this about you. Like, if I was you, I wouldn't have it. Like, mm. you deal with that. Like, do you get it? Mm. And you don't want to deal with it because you don't need to prove anything. To know. You want to go home on time. You don't want to get extra days or, or have a commotion with a man on the wing and you step out every day and you see each other and waiting, knowing that something's going to go up or you got to do him first or he's got to do you first. Like, you get it? So the hardest thing for me, I would say, overcoming negativity and what people are saying, that's probably the hardest thing I've, I've ever had to you do. you got to let your ego go, isn't it? Yeah, like, you got you got to say sometimes, like, cool, let's look at it like this. Like, I just got to be the one to take the loss in it. Like, you got to just firm it and go back to yourself. Mm. Like, 
Because there's plenty of times I've could have reacted to stuff and I would have been in there now, still now. Like, you extra get days. Extra days for what? Because a man has said something and I've gone and reacted and now I can't see my you. I told my you I'm coming home this day. Now I've got to tell him I ain't coming home for another two, three weeks because a man has drawn me out and I've took it upon myself to retaliate. That's, that's dead. Okay. What is so? This is a question for both of you again. What is kind of, I guess, the biggest thing you've taken away from being inside? Whether it be a lesson, whether it be, um, you know, something like that. Like, what's your biggest kind of takeaway? That's a that's a that's a good question. That's a good question. Like what's what, what has left the kind of biggest? Oh, the whole thing, the whole thing. You want to do that again? You want to do that again? Uh I'll be honest with you. One thing for me would be no, no, no amount of money can make me do what I did ever again. Because where was I for my child? You get it? as in it's not worth it no more. As in, I would what I did back then. I won't do it again. If I could, I would find a different route because the route that I took, yeah, did you get like the route that I took wasn't a route that I should have took. But at that moment of time and the situation that I was in, that was the only route I could take. Did you get it? So now that I know, if you take that route again, you're gonna go back to the same place for where you've been for longer. For longer this time, as in first strike, you get a little touch. You see, second, third. They're, they're taking you away as in that's always at the back of my mind now, as in if you ever get low or you've lost your job or don't don't take a second job as another option do you get as in do something different as in try to expand something else do you, do you get because if you don't if you don't try something else you're just gonna go back to jail and this time you might not even see your son because something could happen to you inside there do you get so I think that's the biggest lesson I've taken as in no amount of money can make me go back to that same place again. You know much wasted potentials inside prison as well. I think that, that might be the biggest takeaway for me. Like there's so it's sad. many. It's sad that the the black oh. guys in there that are educated and there's so even the, even <laughs> ones that aren't properly educated. They're just there's so much untapped talent and potential in there. You got grown men plaiting hair like. <laughs> like, Do you know how much so talent that is? It's, it's, I, I tried to pick up chess. <laughs> I used to play chess when I was younger. Yeah, mm. I was all right. I'm not fantastic. I was all right. There's a guy, one of my bridges. I say it's my bridges. One of my bridges. So used to play chess. So you're not gonna learn. When I tell you this guy wiped the floor with me and a bag of other people. They had like a little tournament thing. The guy would just wipe the floor with me. He's doing things that I'd, I've never seen do. This guy's a, like a genius. Chess. Mm. What did you learn to play? I just picked up inside here. <laughs> Say what? Yeah, I just picked it up. Chess is the most common game in jail yeah, as well. Of course it is. Or blackjack. Sudoku. All these kind of, there's, there's people that I'm convinced if they were in any other walk of life, they would end up being company owners, high level business people, um, teachers, whatever I've, else. But because they're just, they, they, they made I've, the I've, wrong decision, I've this watched, is where I've, they are. I've watched a man build a bear from candles from from yeah, matchsticks you know, the potential the potential is crazy <laughs> the potential is crazy in there the potential is crazy in there it's still where's she going <laughs> oh you could have just said that from there I feel like this could have gone on for a hell of a lot longer we might do it again we might bring you back do you know what would be actually a good shout? A woman that's been away. Who? I don't know. No woman. Do you know, do you know a woman that's been away? I know a few of them. I know a few of them. That might be because the, the contrast between, because we only ever talk about yeah. the male experience. I think the women experience is more worse still because I've heard it. Like women's side of jail. Yeah, yeah crazy. we only ever really talk about that. So I think if we, we, we might, this might be a two-parter and we'll get you back. And we'll try and get a 
couple a couple of women in, even if they don't want to be on camera. Mm-hmm. Maybe have them off and just have their voices, and see, yeah, and see how it pans out. Because I feel like this is we've only really like scraped the top it's a little bit. There's plenty. There's mm-hmm. more. There's, there's, a, there's a lot more in, in that's going on with people and that like, in jail. Just mm-hmm. people don't people don't see it. Innit? It's just just mm-hmm. the way it goes. But yeah, for now, this is us. Yeah. This was at your big age. Dion will be back next time. She's been here off camera, but she'll be back next time. And we'll do, I think this is episode, I don't know what the number is. But we'll be back next week. Thank you to Marnie for coming out. Thank you for having me. Good man, we'll, get, we'll bring you back as well. Because we, we planned this months ago. This was before Christmas, right? This is it. <laughs> this, this is, is ages Christmas, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking like three, four months back. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get, we'll, um, we'll definitely get you back on. Mm. Yeah. This might even be a, a, an audience one, you know. That, that's actually a good idea, you know. I, I feel like I, this, should be, a, this should be an audience one. I think, so. I think everyone's, I want to see everyone's point of views. Like, I think yeah. we should do an audience one because like, there's certain topics. There's scope, yeah. There's scope yeah. in this that we can 110%. expand on. So, yeah, till next time. Deuces. Camera's coming back out. <laughs>